Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, a VPN provider that gives you internet privacy. Head over to expressvpn.com slash emmymade and find out how you can get three months free. Big thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Now today I'm going to be preparing a apocalyptic meal. Now, if you missed my apocalyptic breakfast, I will put the link above and down below. But today I'm going to be making a dinner that consists of a whole canned chicken. A whole canned chicken, yes, that's gonna be our main course. And then we're going to have some bread with that, a little bit of canned bread. And with my bread, I'm gonna have some cheese. Look at the size of this cheese. <laughs> so to begin with, we're gonna have this, and this is sweet Sioux canned whole chicken. So in this can, which is 50 ounces, is a whole chicken. A rather small chicken, but a whole chicken. Now this is completely cooked, so it says to reheat this in a 475 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. I believe you can still find this on supermarket shelves in parts of the country, but not anywhere where I live. So I purchased this on the internet and this was $27. So very expensive whole chicken, but it's in a can and presumably you could keep it for quite a long time. Not indefinitely, but quite a long time. So let's go ahead and open this. Da, da, da. Ooh. Ooh, I'm getting that canned chicken broth, canned chicken smell. It's not too pleasant. All right, wowzers. Okay, so there looks like there's some headspace in there. There's definitely some congealed fat there. And it looks a little gelatinous. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and dump our chicken out. Oh boy, here we go. Here it is. <laughs> oh, that poor sad chicken. Okay. So. <laughs> wow, that is a pretty sad looking whole chicken. Yes, it is whole, but not really. <laughs> oh man. So here's the whole chicken. It is indeed a whole chicken, although it's pretty disintegrated. I'm gonna do as instructed and place this in a 475 degree oven and bake it for 10 to 15 minutes. So while the chicken is baking, let me tell you a little bit more about ExpressVPN. So what is a VPN? A VPN stands for a virtual private network. And basically it creates a secure connection between your computer and the internet. So if you're at all like me and you use a public Wi-Fi system, for example, if I'm editing and I'm in a cafe and the connection is not secure. So once I'm connected to ExpressVPN, all of my data is encrypted. So I don't have to worry about passwords or other sensitive information being intercepted. So I love the peace of mind that comes with having the security that comes with the VPN. So ExpressVPN is really easy to use and easy to connect to, and it offers the fastest and most consistent speed without any internet restrictions. So ExpressVPN works out to be about $7 a month, and they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description. Head over to expressvpn.com slash emmymade and take back your privacy privacy with ExpressVPN. All right, next we're gonna open our can of cheese. Now this is Cougar Gold, and this comes from Washington State University. Now look at the size of this cheese. Isn't this incredible? Now, Washington State University has been making this cheese since the 40s, and this is their flagship cheese. I also purchased these two, the Natural Cheddar and the Natural Viking. I think I'm gonna do this in a separate taste testing video. So this has been produced since the 1940s when Washington State University received funding from the US government and the American Can Company to develop a way to preserve cheese in a tin. So this means of preservation came before plastic was invented and it was seen as an improvement to wax because it didn't crack like wax. So if it kept under refrigeration and the tin is not punctured in any way, this cheese can last indefinitely. In fact, the cheese flavors will improve. You'll have more amino acid crystals being formed and the flavors will be even better. I'm super excited to taste this because I've heard rave reviews of this. Ugh. So this is one pound and 14 ounces of cheese. It is not inexpensive. One wheel of cheese was $22. Look at that, that looks gorgeous. 
Ah, oh, it smells great too. Get the cheese out. Dun, 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 dun. Isn't that a great tin? I love this tin. And there is our wheel of cheese. It is huge. I'm gonna slice a couple pieces of cheese off of there. My handy dandy cheese plane. I love this thing. So to go with the cheese, let's have some bread. And this is B&M's Brown Bread Original. B&M stands for Burnham and Morrill. Now this is a very regional thing. I live in New England in Rhode Island, and this bread can be found in most grocery stores. I had never seen this before when I lived in California because this historically wasn't really eaten in California. This brown bread is eaten usually with baked beans, Boston baked beans, and it is a dark, kind of slightly molasses bread, but it comes in a can. And because it comes in a can, you can just keep it in your pantry and you've got bread whenever you want it. Ooh, there's a nice little vacuum hiss there. Hear that? So to open, you're supposed to open both sides of the can. I'm just gonna remove the top, push it out, push it out. Which way does it come out better? This way or this way? Doesn't want to come out. Use my knife. Gently push loaf out of one end with a spoon. What do you mean push it out with a spoon? I'm not really understanding what you're saying. So I'm going to unstick it with a knife and gently press it out. Ridiculous, right? I don't remember it being this hard last time. Okay, there we go. Ugh, whoa, that was a lot harder than I expected. So let's cut a slice of that. There's the beautiful brown bread. It's pretty dense, but very moist. It smells a bit of molasses. I've got two slices of brown bread. So we baked this chicken, but it's more like a kind of boiled chicken. <laughs> All the jello -y bits just kind of dissolved into kind of a soup here. And uh, let's serve up some of this chicken. I am a dark meat girl, so I'm gonna put some of that on my plate. Alrighty, so there is our apocalyptic dinner. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm gonna try the chicken first because that's nice and hot. And uh, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Excuse me while I pull bones out of my mouth. Mmm. <laughs> that was part of the wing. I thought that might be some meat, but. Let's try that again. <laughs> that was basically very salty, very soft chicken skin. Alrighty, let's try that. That's some meat. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, first of all, it's very, very, very salty and very well cooked. So the chicken is quite tender, but very salty. It tastes just like canned chicken broth. It does have a kind of metallic tinned flavor, to the chicken, but it is very, very tender. And of course, juicy because it's been sitting in chicken broth all this time. But it doesn't really have a very great texture because it's so overcooked. And I'm really missing the caramelization. There's no crispy skin, none of those kind of Maillard effect little bits happening here because this is basically a boiled whole chicken. But post-apocalypse, I'm sure this would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> now let's go ahead and try our canned bread. Mm-hmm. It has a very strong flavor of molasses. There's a slight sweetness to it. And the texture of it is very moist. It's quite dense, but it is moist. Not at all dry. And it's a very unique style of bread. Don't imagine sandwich bread because this is nothing like it. It's, rather than being yeasty, this is more akin to say a quick bread, like banana bread or 
a scone. I think the leavening in this is baking soda, so it has a slightly different texture, but quite good coming out of a can and sitting in your pantry for how many years? This would be golden. Mm -hmm. Now, let's try the cheese, the one that I've been waiting for. Let's give this a go. Mmm. Oh my. That is excellent. Mmm. That is a delicious sharp cheddar cheese. Really nice mouthfeel, not overly crumbly. It's still got a little bit of that kind of silky richness in terms of texture, but dry. Nice sharp cheddary flavor, but not too much of a bite. You don't have any of those amino acid crystals formed yet, but the flavor is very intense. It has a great nuttiness. This is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm. A little bit of sweetness in there as well. Delicious. Now I'm gonna have it on my bread. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It surprisingly actually goes really well with the molasses bread. The rich dairy creaminess and the nuttiness goes really well with the sweetness. Let's just go ahead and make an open face sandwich and add some chicken to that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Definitely improvement on the chicken as well because the chicken is so salty and the bread is slightly sweet, it really balances out all that sodium. So yeah, I think that's the best choice to take the chicken, place it on the bread, have a little cheese or omit the cheese if you're gonna have the chicken because the cheese is salty. But yeah, all together, not bad. And also if you're curious, I'll put links in the description to all of these items as well. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for joining me and big thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Take back your internet security by heading over to expressvpn.com slash emmymade to see how you can get three months absolutely free. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.